Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and I was thinking today, since it's uh, been snowing and it's below freezing outside, and we really haven't got a whole lot of rain here recently to wash out the creeks, and can't really go digging right now because it's below freezing and the ground would be pretty hard to dig. So I just thought that I would run through my Eli Lilly cabinet. You guys know I've been collecting a lot of those here recently been seriously getting into collecting from this company and I've gotten some sweet connections through collectors who have been doing this for years and uh, I'm starting to get some really good stuff from the Eli Lilly and company cabinet to the bottles and everything so just gonna run through here real quick make a little five ten minute video and see how we do with it and see how you guys enjoy it Drop a comment down if you like these kinds of videos. But we have some really killer Eli Lilly pieces from the large poisons to the large effervescent bottles to the smaller effervescent bottles down here to some early rare medicines right here, too. And the same thing down here, too, with some other unique things as well. And some pill bottles and uh, castor oil and just stuff like that up there. So I'm going to start my way from the bottom. Go all the way up to the top. So here we go. Starting off over here recently. I've already had, I've already showed you guys these uh, mercury prodide pills. but And this caffeine and sodium benzoate. But recently these two right here I've added to the collection. Now, if you guys know Eli Lilly stuff, you know, finding these plaid design packages right here that would go with the pill bottles, and they still have the pill bottles inside of them. Uh, finding that plaid design is very rare, and I got these cheap at a antique store. I'm pretty sure they didn't know what they had, because finding these plaid designs are like one in a... A 5,000 chance pretty much you'll find this design pretty much every day besides or yeah you'll find this design more than you'll find this one and what I'm talking about is plaid design is the red and green stripes on the back and all the way around the bottle and this one is almost in mint condition besides the stain right there I mean, that one's almost perfect. I almost passed out when I saw these in the display case at the antique store. Because of how good they are. I mean, you could put a, an entire collection, a little display together of these. And it could get you around $1,000. I mean... Not that monetary value really matters, it's the historical, but touching on monetary every now and then to show you how su historically significant some of these pieces are, that's what they'll get you, and that's how hard they are to find. This one, the top has been opened, so I can show you what the bottle would have looked like. And that's what it would have looked like inside. Just these little pill bottles. This one still has the pill still in it. But that's pretty cool. And the label's still pretty good on that one too as well. So moving on, we got these. These three you guys have seen before. Got the... Uh, Poison diamond antiseptic pills that were used for external use only. And they have a, a little instruction down there just in case if you did ingest a pill. That's the antidote right there. You guys can pause the video and read that. And we got the strontium. Seen that one before. Mandrake. Seen that one before. Then we have this very odd one. And... Uh, these are actually very hard to find. They're from Eli Lilly, and yes, they are vaginal tablets. 
and they were used for exactly what you think. They were an antiseptic for women to use, and they would clean down there apparently, and they were just to keep that part of your body clean back then. I mean, this is Eli Lilly. They pretty much made medicine for that would help you with anything. Anything medical related, they made it. Anything that would help your body out for your well-being and your health, they'd make it. Moving on to this interesting piece, and this one's very interesting. I got it from a collector. This is the cod fish liver bottles, and someone in California years ago got a hold of the molds, and the mold that they used to make the glass balls back then, they got a hold of, and they made candles out of them. So that's a little wick at the top, and then that's all the candle wax right there. That's very unique. Never going to see one of those because... It's just so unique, you need to have the mold of the bottle, and it's such a unique idea as well. Moving on, we got a little Eli Lilly, uh, <coughs> I forget what you call these. It's like a vial or something, uh, don't know the exact terminology for it, but they would mix chemicals or different medication in there, and pretty much make up the medicine that they were doing. That's not Eli Lilly, so I'm just going to pass on that right now. It was just a little pill, probably late 1800s, turn of the century, uh, pill vials. They had, still have the pills in there, probably a little salesman sample. But that's all for the bottom row. I'm going to move up to the top now. Moving on to the other shelf, I believe you guys have seen most of this stuff. I have added a lot here recently, so pretty sure we've all seen the headache salts, uh, magnesium citrate, sodium phosphate, and here's the newer stuff right here. The Vicky Artificial Salts, both of these I had uh, added here recently. This little guy is amazing. The label on that is just absolutely amazing. Then we got the sodium phosphate. The other sodium phosphate. I had the magnesium citrate before. All this other stuff is already added besides this boar scene right here. <clears throat> if I can talk, geez. I think I've been kind of catching the cold or something here recently. I've not been able to really talk clearly here, but this one right here is pretty good because this never reached the public hands. Now in 1900, Eli Lilly was going in fierce competition with other big pharmaceutical companies like Park Davis to make cosmetic type products. Now this boracine was a nursery powder and it was for skin irritation. So it's kind of like baby powder, and it was for making sure you didn't have any rashes down below, pretty much making sure that you didn't have any skin irritation exactly like, kind of like baby powder is. And they never did end up going to sell it. They made an attractive package and everything, and even went to the extent of making a really good label for it and they just never ended up producing it to the public. There's only around five of these known and this one actually I got from Dan which then he got it from the Eli Lilly archives which is heavily guarded collection that they have of their history. So I would say over 80% of these known came from Eli Lilly so or the Eli Lilly archives I should say. And this one's really good. It's got a really good label on it. Interesting uh, top to it. It's very cool. Since it would have been a powder. And it reads an elegant toilet and nursery powder also used for prickly heat and other skin irritations. Borosine. Antiseptic absorbent refreshing. Manufactured by Eli Lilly in Co. Indianapolis. This is exactly 
122 years old since it's from 1900 that's really cool on the back it says borosina toilet nursery powder and for the treatment and prep or prevention of prickly heat and other irritations of the skin had our children with borosine every time after they are bathed or washed and used generally as you would any other toilet powder. This will cool and soften the skin ten greatly to prevent soreness, chafing, prickly heat, nettle rash, and other irritations of the skin. But when these affections break out, the surface should be cleaned with clear water. Or yeah, yeah, clear water mixed with a small quantity of cooking soda and moderately dried and borosine applied thickly with the hand. Pretty sure I skipped a line there, but um, whatever. But it's a very interesting product. Very rare and very unique. It's not every day that you get something that was never fully produced and never mass produced and never got into the public hands. It's pretty interesting. And I will definitely be the centerpiece to this collection. Among others, there's a lot of great bottles in this collection, but I, I really couldn't even choose a favorite. There's just so many good stories to all of these bottles. Moving on to the second shelf, and we got some really good stuff on this one. Starting off over here to the left, <clears throat> we got the Special Order Eli Lilly bottle from 1912. And this one was specially ordered from West Side Drugstore from Taft, California. And that drugstore from Taft, California put in a special order for a medicine, sent it to Eli Lilly, and then they sent this back. And <clears throat> it was... Especially made with those ingredients that they wanted. There's over 5,000 special tablets, pink. And that's the date right there, the 4th, the 10th of 1912. And it's pretty cool because you can use that number right there, which is the order number. And if you go down here right above where it says Eli Lilly and Company, it says above number and date for use on reorder, <coughs> excuse me, reorders. So you could use that number to get refills and reorders for this specific medicine which i think that's very cool and makes it very unique and it still has all the pills pretty much in there it's filled all the way up to here you can see so it's got over half of the pills still in there that's pretty cool moving on you guys have seen the acid elixir here lacks of tablets that's unopened still has all the tablets and uh as you can see it's still filled all the way up to the top Got that on eBay, and I was the only bidder, and it sold for $25. I was a very, very surprised that that happened. This bottle is very significant because this predates Eli Lilly. This is when he was still working, and it's still a two-story little drugstore on Maryland Street. <coughs> Excuse me, with uh, Johnston. So before Eli started Eli Lilly and Company, he worked with Johnston and the company was called Johnston Lilly. So this bottle was a lettuce fluid extract that they made and the story with Johnston Lilly is they worked together for a couple of years I think until around 1876 when Eli Lilly started Eli Lilly and Company, pharmaceutical company, but he hated working with Johnston because he wanted to cheat and steal people's money but Eli being a colonel in the Civil War and seeing the traumas and the just horrific war scenes and people suffering, he wanted to actually make good, reliable medication and pharmaceutical medicine for people. So their partnership didn't last that long. So this is a very historically significant bottle. And it's still got the ground glass stopper and it is blown and mold just past the pottled age. So a very neat bottle, very significant. It's the oldest bottle in this cabinet. Moving on, you guys have seen the uh, cocoa quinine 
I got this one here recently. It's uh, a little bit later than this one because it's got a metal screw cap on it, but it's pretty much the same product, just uh, a little bit later than the one to the left. <clears throat> then we got the cerium oxalate. You guys have seen this one before, I believe, too. This one's really neat. It's an absolute pristine label. It was used as a nerving and stomach, or, yeah. And, uh, I believe it really doesn't go into detail about what exactly it is. It was just for, like, the, I believe it was just for the nerves and stuff. So it was a, uh, you would take it, and it was kind of a little bit like headache, or headache medicine. Kind of like Bromo Seltzer. And they actually did make their own headache salts up there. But I think this is just more of like a, uh, I don't know, a stress reliever, I guess you could say. Which is very cool. And it still has most of the product in it with a pristine label on it. Moving on, I got this here recently. This is the largest poison diamond antiseptic pill bottle that you can get, or tablets. They're tablets. And I got this off of eBay, and it has a very clean label on it besides the writing on there with pencil from the date is right next to it it says 3rd of the 17th of 1951 so someone in 1951 wrote that on there don't know why but what's pretty interesting about this bottle <coughs> is that the bottle itself is blown in mold obviously it's square lipped you see a square lip blown in mold but the label is later than the actual bottle so the bottle itself is pre-20s I'd say and the label when I had some research done and had someone look up the code right there on the label because pretty much every Eli Lilly label has a little code right there All right right there you can look that up and uh, it'll tell you the date of this label so this label was from 1943, so I've been talking to some people, and apparently Eli Lilly would keep old bottles in stock and reuse them in the future. And it didn't happen all the time, but as big as Eli Lilly was back then, and still is today, how big the company is, they did some weird things every now and then, and using old bottles and keeping old bottles in stock that were never used for future uh, fills was something that happened every now and then. That's what happened. So you have a blown and mold square lipped bottle that's probably from the early to mid 1910s with a label on it that's from 1943. So this bottle had been sitting in storage and wasn't truly used until 1943, which I think is very cool and adds to the uniqueness of the bottle and everything. I wish I could get a good uh, a good zoom up on the tablets because if you could see through the glass in this camera the tablets actually you can vaguely see it has a little skull and crossbones on it and then on the other side it would say poison which I think is very cool. Moving on to the top shelf I'm pretty sure I've showed the Strice 9 uh, sulfate bottle before. Got the bromides back there. I had recently added this as well. It's a uh, iodine yellow. It's a poison of some sort. Of some sort. Jeez, can't speak today. And I got a little pill bottle right here. An inhaler. That's pretty cool. It's unopened. Castor oil. Recently added that. Pretty sure I've shown this one off before. It's a little five bottle set. Actually, it has one bottle in the package, but there would have been more in there. And uh, that's it. If you guys really enjoyed this, uh, please drop a like and uh, tell me your thoughts on this type of video if you want me to do some more in the future. Because I really like going through and showing most of this stuff. It's very interesting. And for... You guys who don't follow my Instagram or anything like that, I could also uh, show you guys on in these videos of what I have in my collection. But guys, please enjoyed.
drop a like and a comment and consider subscribing. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.